thank you for having me, um, UKM. Um, thanks, uh, Google News Initiative, um, for sponsoring this series. Um, without further ado, let me just share my screen. So please um, take a look at the message in the chat box. Um, before we start, right, well, while I'm presenting, you know, some of the basic concepts and principles, right, uh, please install the browser extension, the We Verify browser extension. We are going to use it um, later. I'm going to demo it. And so if you are able to install it, yeah, you, are, you are able to test it. I have some exercises for you. Okay, so uh, it will be great if you can install the extension. So I sent out the link again in the chat box. All right, uh, it looks like this. Invit, okay, this is the Invit verification plugin. So you can install it on your Chrome or Firefox. Um, but it is not available for other browsers like Safari, you know, or Internet Explorer. So please um, install it. You can install it on Chrome or uh, Firefox. Either one is good. Okay, so um, let's start to dive in. Today we have quite a lot um, to cover. But just to um, remind you that right, today's verification um, workshop or training um, basically, it's very similar to the other verification trainings that um, Google News Initiative did before for journalists, right? So if you have attended you know, some of our um, trainings, either by me or um, Trina um, or our trainer, Yo Owen, right? Um, you'll see that most of them um, are actually very similar to each other, right? Because we did not change much. Um, then for elections, I basically, you know, put in several... Um, examples local examples from malaysian um, politics politicians uh, for exercises because you know whether you're covering election or not right the whole process of verification or fact checking is basically you know pretty much the same using the same theory concepts um, as well as the same tools right just that the context uh, might be different and also, you know, you might you might have to do it faster uh, because you know um, if we are talking about elections, then usually campaign is only for two or three weeks, right? So uh, you might want to do that uh, much faster than you are doing um, the normal fact checking process. All right, there are several things that I would like to cover. Okay, um, but we are spending a lot of time on number three and number four, which is you know how we can do social media audit as well as how do we do fact checking using visuals and geolocation. All right, uh, an introduction uh, just to clarify several concepts, okay? Um, we like to call misinformation, we like to use the term fake news, okay? But actually fake news uh, itself is a very problematic term, right? Because you see that, you know, fake and news is actually an oxymoron, which means the news shouldn't be fake. If you call an information a news, right, then which means you know, it, it is produced by professional journalists, right, it has been fact checked and verified, then only it can become a news. So there's no, no, no such thing as fake news, right? And they are, you know, there are also agenda when people come out with the term fake news. For example, um, the former US President um, Trump, he liked to use the news fake news to attack media, you know, that are not friendly to him, right? So they, he keep calling those media, oh, you are fake news, you are fake news, right? Um, it is to, with the agenda to um, slander um, news, um, to slander journalists, right? and you know to create mistrust um, against uh, mainstream media in the us um so in that case right um if among fact checkers right we don't use the term fake news because it is problematic and it it is confusing because it um you are not sure what you are referring to right like fake news do you uh, uh, do you mean the content is fake or do you mean that the people spreading it has agenda and things like that right so in the world of uh, we call it misinformation or in the world of, you know, um, verification. We usually use the, the two common terms. One is called misinformation. Another is called disinformation. 
Uh, there's also mal information, but it's less used, right? But um, most of the time, we are talking about mis and disinformation. So misinformations and disinformation, these are false information. Okay, these two are false information. The difference between them is that misinformation is unintentional mistakes. Okay, for example, mistakes made by the journalists when they are putting the caption to a photo. Or you know, um, or when you did a satire piece, for example, by you know the Malaysian satire website is Tapir Times, and uh, people thought that oh that is true, but actually it's a satire. So these are misinformation. Uh, it doesn't have the intention to harm anyone or to achieve specific agenda, right? This information is also false information, but it is deliberately manipulated right to create conspiracies theories or rumors or to harm someone okay to attack someone or to um, achieve specific agenda for example you know uh, political instability for example um, polarizing the the society right or promoting um certain individual or political parties right these are this information so what make it different what make two of them different is the intention behind the information right the false information uh, do you have the intention to do something and that is this information so when we talk about like foreign um information operation uh, by those for example during the russia and ukraine war you see a lot of um, false information coming from Russia um, as well as the other side, right? So those, we call them disinformation because they are created or they are manipulated with specific agenda, right? To influence public opinion, okay? So use misinformation. If you are not sure the intention, then just use misinformation. If you know that, you know, these are, there are people behind them, they want to achieve something, then this is called disinformation. Right, um, the last um, discussed malinformation uh, basically means that these are true information. Information that is not false, but they are published or they are released with the agenda of, you know, um, um, harming somebody or to attack someone, okay, or an organization. For example, you release um, the private information of someone with the intention of, you know, um, asking other people to harass this person. So that is mal information, right? So when we talk about verification or fact checking, mostly we are talking about mis and disinformation because these are false information. Okay, just to you know, uh, clear the definition and how do we call this uh, problem before we proceed to the techniques and tools. Okay, there are seven types of mis and disinformation. Um, you can just um, Google it, right? I don't plan to go through each of them, right? But just to show you that, you know, it is not always um, a picture that has been Photoshopped, right? Uh, it could be false context, which means, you know, an old photo, for example, old photo, which is a true photo, um, genuine photo, right? But used in a different context, or you use an old photo, for a recent incident, right, which is you know, not true. And remember that satire or parody um, can also be mis- and disinformation. And we know that mis- dis or disinformation can be harmful. Um, for example, recent, the Indonesian election, right? And the most recent one is actually the Filipino election, right? Where the candidates have been launching information warfare or, you know, misinformation operation during the campaign and was able to win the election right so if for your information for those who follow the filipino election um the current winner uh who is the current current uh, president uh Bobong, he he did not give any media interview okay or any press conference during the whole campaign can you imagine that basically he just released information through his own information uh, through his own campaign so there is no uh, media that can question him or put any questions to him he only appeared in you know uh, for example influencers interview or bloggers right um, he never 
not one press conference um, during the whole campaign. And that actually gives, you know, it, it is a good example of how you can operate the information ecosystem to your favor, okay? And avoiding, you know, all the scrutiny by the mainstream or the traditional media or the journalists, okay? So we have seen that, um, that's why it makes, uh, it makes uh, fact checking or verification even more important uh, when it comes to elections, because um, we know that elections um, is full of, you know, um, true and false information that's trying to influence the public opinion and trying to influence how people vote. And the uh, results of an election, you know, can be, um, has, you know, huge impact on the future um, of a country as well as the lives of uh, the citizens. Okay, again, now this is another um, case of using uh, false information to influence um, elections, right? And it is happening um, very near us in Indonesia. Um, later, it happened in Philippines. And I believe, right, um, the same trend, we'll be seeing the same trend in the coming Malaysian election as well. All right, so what we can do as media practitioners or journalists, so first thing, right, even before we fact check anything or we receive a false information when we're trying to verify it, we ourselves have to practice responsible report, reporting, right? We have to avoid making mistakes or we have to avoid us being used to amplify the false information spread by political bodies or candidates, okay? So some of the questions that, you know, um, we should ask ourselves before publishing any information, you know, is this an original piece of content or is it recycled? Okay, is that is that an old story used um, for a different context to attack someone? How does the content make me feel, right? The content that make me feel very angry that you want to share with someone or it makes you feel very happy that you want to share with someone those are usually red flags, right? Because uh, the those who are very good in information operation, right, know how to manipulate your emotions. And the purpose is to viral the content that it has to trigger your emotion. You know, make you super excited about it or super sad about it. So you are able, you will, you will be spreading it and helping the creator to reach a wider audience, right? And the last question for us is that, is this content fact checkable? Should I fact check it? Not, this is very important, okay? not every single piece of false information should be fact checked or can be fact checked, okay? So there are two questions. Can you fact check it is one thing. Should you fact check it is another thing. Because if you fact check it, then you, of course, you plan to publish it, right? you fact check or publish it. And sometimes you might be, you know, um, giving a favor to the creator of the false information why because you know a lot of time when they create some misinformation it did not go beyond their own circle right which means it is circulated in a very small um, circle it did not reach uh, many people but after it was reported by media or it was fact checked by media then it became viral all right, so we are the one that popularize the information, that make it to the wider public domain, and you don't want that to happen, right? So a lot of time when, before we check fact check anything, just to make sure and I do some check whether this is something popular or not. If this is something that, you know, very few people know about it, you just leave it, and it will die itself by itself, right? You know, if it's something that is very viral, um, or something has been raised by, you know, uh, politicians, it, and it, it, it has already entered the larger public domain, right? Then, of course, we need to think about whether we should uh, fact check it, all right? So think about it, yeah? Don't become the tool of the misinformation um, creator, right, to help spreading the agenda, okay? Then another question is, is this content fact checkable? A lot of time, um, there are a lot of information that is not fact checkable, which means somebody say something, okay? You don't know who is that somebody. The information doesn't tell you any specific uh, specific uh, location. There's no location, there's no name, there's no sources, nothing, okay? It is just general 
misinformation. In that case, sometimes it is very hard to fact check it. But when you can't fact check something, it doesn't. It is not the end, because you are still able to um, find out the circumstances around that miss or disinformation. For example, who created it, where it first appeared, who spread it, by investigating the players, right? That try to create or try to spread this information, sometimes you are able to tell people that don't believe this information because it is created, it is started, it is spread by some suspicious um, accounts or suspicious websites or platforms, all right? So sometimes we can't fact check the content, we are able, we still can um, discredit or we still can dismiss the information. Um, by investigating the circumstances around that information. So we are going to do some, um, I'm going to introduce some tools and techniques um, as well as um, do, we can do some exercise uh, for that. Right, um, sorry, this, this is not an exercise, but just to show you this um, chart, not really a chart, but an infographic, is that when we are publishing and fact-checking, uh, or fact-check information, when we fact-check something, we want to publish it, um, remember, try not to amplify the lie or amplify the disinformation okay and there's this um way of reporting uh, it's called truth sandwich right how do you write a story right first start with the truth right say something that you know um if you try to dismiss a misinformation start with the truth first and then tell people what is the lie after that, return to the truth, okay? So this is called sandwich. So you sandwich the line with two pieces of true information, okay? This is the structure of you know, our, our fact check um, report or story, okay? Start with the truth, indicate the line, return to the truth, all right? Why do we want to start with the truth? Because we know that you know, um, when people are sharing, usually people share the first two paragraphs sometimes, and if you are posting on social media, make sure that you know the message, the title, um, they are emphasizing the truth instead of the lie. Okay, right. Um, here I develop a fact checking workflow uh, for beginners. Okay, so when you decide, you know, you want to fact check something or you receive a false information, this is how um, you can work through it. The first step: identify fact checkable elements in the content. Fact checkable means that if there's a name, if there's location, there's a date. Um, if there is um, specific information, um, then which means that it is possible to fact check it. Okay, check if the content has been fact checked by others. Yeah, before doing your own fact check, right, try to check whether it has been fact checked by others because there are many fact checkers working at the same time, right? So if they, it has been fact checked by others, then you don't have to um, waste your time. Sometimes you can just cite from other fact checkers. Sometimes you can just look at what have they um, fact checked if if you want to build on you know um, on their efforts to do further investigation then you don't have to repeat you know the steps and I will show you how do you um, look for fact check information information that has been fact checked okay so if you decide to fact check yourself then plan your strategy which elements should be fact checked first right if the information has a name a person you may want to you know probably that is the easiest way then you can maybe you know that person is a public figure then the easiest way of course to make a phone call right and ask as per at that that person it is true okay but if you suspect suspect that that's, that person might lie to you you might want to start with a different element okay if there is a picture or a video then you might want to check the uh, provenance which means the origin of the video so here, if the content has no clear source, start by checking the origin and history of the content. Do an online search by using search operators. Understand the context. Context is very important in the whole disinformation um, um, sphere because you know um, the context can help you to establish whether something should be uh, is uh, is trust trustful or not, right? Because if it's spread by cyber troopers, if it's spread by some suspicious websites then you know it's problem, right? It is it's problematic. Okay, <clears throat> if the content has images or videos, you need specific tools and techniques. You can do a reverse image search to find original, or maybe not original, maybe the first image or video that has been posted online. 
The second one, if um, the videos and, and images, you want to know the location and date of, of it, then you can use some online open source information to identify it, right? So let's say someone sent you a video saying that this happened last week. If you are able to um, verify that this video was actually taken two years ago, then you are able to fact check it, right? Um, the same thing sometimes since people send you um, images saying that, oh, this happened um, at this location. If you're able to verify that, no, that is not the location, it actually happened somewhere else, then that is also another way of fact checking the information. If you um, have any questions, uh, please put in the chat box, right? I can, I will get to them. So most of the time, you need to combine all the different tools and techniques. Uh, there's no one way of doing fact checking, right? Sometimes you can reach the same conclusion using different techniques, and you need to be creative as well sometimes, all right? Okay, um, just now I said that you should, before you fact check yourself, you should look at, you know, whether it has been fact checked by others. And there are several uh, fact checkers in our country, as well as in this region. So sometimes um, an information that, you know, impact Malaysia, uh, it can also be used in Indonesia or Philippines, right? And probably those information has been fact checked by the Filipino or the Indonesian uh, fact checkers. So you want to look for them first. So in, for Malaysia, the longest fact checking effort has been done by AFP. AFP fact check, um, they have at least, I think, two fact checkers based in Malaysia. Um, they focus on misinformation in Malaysia. So if you just go, go and go and Google at, at AFP fact check Malaysia, you should be, um, you should find a page um, that is dedicated to uh, Malaysia fact checking, fact checking in Malaysia. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Um, you can also look at, um, for example, Check Fakta in Indonesia. Okay, um, Check Fakta is a fact checking initiative run by journalists in Indonesia. Okay, so you might want to, you know, run your uh, misinformation through Check Fakta first to see whether they are they they have to fact check it. In the Philippines, you know, Rappler and several others um, fact checking um, initiative has been doing, you know, some great fact checking over the years. Right. Um, so if you want to know like who else um, has fact checked the information, um, another way of doing that is to go and look at Google Fact Check Explorer. Um, let me just show you really quick. Google Fact Check Explorer. You can just Google it. I'm going to put that in the chat box. So this is a uh, fact check about a topic or person. Let me just try our former prime minister. No, there's no result. Um, if you put something like monkeypox, I think you'll see that um, there are different information, um, fact check information, information that has been fact checked related to uh, monkeypox, and this is this comes from like whole world, all right. And these are all um, results that have been filtered and selected by Google. Okay, so they are um, very reliable. Okay, these are not from the whole internet. These are from fact checkers that um, are recognized by Google, right? Um, you can put in Malaysia and you should be able to see um, some fact check information of Malaysia. You can see that this claim is that Malaysia is the most corrupt country in the world. Is that true? You can view the article. As I mentioned this uh, just now, the AFP fact check team. So this article came from um, AFP fact check. All Washington Journal report about corruption in Malaysia recirculates online. Yep, right. So it was a old news recycle. Okay. All right. So this is how you can fact check. You know whether something has been. Sorry, this is how you can check if something has been fact checked. <sighs> sorry, guys. I don't usually wake up at eight to prepare my training. <laughs> okay. Um, things to look out for. Okay. Um. Just now we talk about, you know, um, you need to check whether it has been fact checked. But now if you are going to fact check the information information by yourself, right? Um, now it's the, all the tools that I'm going to introduce to you. First is uh, a who is lookup. A who is lookup um, is able to tell you who registered a website. So if you found that you do a Google search and you found that that misinformation came from a specific website, 
you want to know who is behind the website because the website looks suspicious. There's no name, there's no photo. You don't know who are these people behind the website, right? You want to check, then you can do a who is lookup, right? So how do we do a who is lookup? Again, I'm going to do a quick demo for you. Who is is um, not a tool. Who is is actually a um, process, okay? So there are different tools that allow you to do who is lookup. And the tools I like is called domain tools. Domain tools, the who is by the do who is look up by domain tools. Domain tool is actually a brand. Okay. I'm going to put that in the chat box as well. So you need to put in a domain or IP address. So let's say um, I put in a website that everyone knows. Um, say Ropikaya, okay, which is like a you know social media kind of um website not re not really a news website but more like a, a, a gossip website um that is quite popular in malaysia so if i put in the domain remove the http remove the triple w okay rotikaya.com i search for it You see that registrant is Muhammad Ismail Bahar Rudin, RTKY Entertainment, blah blah blah. So you can see that you know. Then now you can search for this person or search for this organization or company, right? So they are the one who registered the website. Sorry, the website Rotikaya. You can even find an address in Kuantan Pahang. Okay, if you look at the here. You you can find more information sometimes um, here, the name, address. There's also a phone number. You can call him if you want. All right. Um, yeah. So this is how you can. It helps you to understand who owns or who registered um, this website. Might not be the owner, um, but you need to. You can know who 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 um, registered the website. But sometimes a website can also hide it, hide behind um agent they can ask an agent to register the website and hide their information so in that case um i'm sorry which means you know the information that you get probably is quite useless because it is done by agent and those agents um helps you know hundred thousands or millions of websites to register so you always find the same agent you know on those websites so in that case um there's nothing much you can do uh if you are investigating a website that ends with dot my right for something for example, let me do a uh, my search for Najib. So let's say you have all this news media. Let's see if I can find something that is not news media. Uh, Sumberkini.my, let's say. I'm not sure what is this Sumberkini, okay? But let's look at it. Yeah, so Sumberkini, if you want to find out like who is behind and because it ends with a dot my, then um, Malaysia actually has an agency. If you want to register as a dot my website, you have to go through that agency. It's called MyNick. Okay, you can go to the who is by MyNick. I'm going to put that in the chat box. Here you can put in, this one also only works for those end with dot com dot my, okay, dot my. It can be .com .my, it can be .org.my. So I'm going to put sumberkini.my and go ahead and search it. And you will see um, invoicing party exabytes. Exabyte is actually a, a IT provider, IT service provider. And you see the registrant. So it's this company that registered the website. That's a name okay, from this company. Um, that's an e, that's email. Yep. So you know now you know that okay, this is the guy that you want to find out more about this guy. Okay, so the next step, maybe you can do a Google search about the name. Um, check LinkedIn, check Facebook, check Twitter, you know, check all the different social media, right? To look at 
uh, who is behind this uh, website. All right, so that is the website um, investigation. Another one is to use Wayback Machine. I think many of you know this. You know, Wayback Machines um, um, basically tell you the history of a website, but not all websites. You know, usually it works for popular websites. So if you go on to go to a certain page, and that page has been taken down, right? Um, you Google it, you found it, but it has been taken down. You want to look at how it looks like um, two years ago or you know three months ago. You might want to go to Wayback Machine, put in a URL, and if you are lucky, Wayback Machine had a copy of that web page uh, two years ago. You were able to see how it looks like um, two years ago. All right. Um, Facebook ad library, I'm not going too much into um, the ad library. I think uh, if you want to know more about investigating ad library, you should attend the workshop by Craig Silverman in the same series, all right? If um, I think the workshop has been done, then you can look at the recording, okay? Recording will be made uh, um, available publicly available, I think. Right, if um, now you have done uh, the website um, investigation, right, another way of doing investigation, investigation, of course, is to search Google. And to search Google, the most effective thing, the way to search Google is, is actually using Google search operators. For those who are not familiar with Google search operators, I encourage you to just go to watch any tutorial about Google search operators, okay, or yeah, here, okay, there are many videos that um, show you how to do that. We won't be able to cover it, um, but usually if you go to the, uh, here I would also like to introduce you the YouTube channel of Google News Initiative. Okay, um, we have done this a lot, um, all those training videos. So if you um, go for, search operators or you go for digital tools if you search for digital tools under the videos you should be able to find tutorials about how to use google search operators and in different languages right um, if you are more familiar with chinese um, i have done chinese videos as well before you just have to find them you can see a lot of them okay so using Google search operators to search, you can search for different social media platforms to see if the same information appears or the name appears uh, on those platforms. And if you found that, you know, if you want to search for Facebook um, to see whether that information appears on Facebook, uh, then you can do the internal Facebook internal search. Okay, I want to show you a recent example. Um, most of you should know, um, should be familiar, I, I assume most of you are, all of you are journalists and you should be familiar with LCS scandal, right? So um, LCS scandal, um, according to Rafizi, this woman called Zainab Mohammed Sali, she is the second wife of um, the allegedly, uh, alleged second wife of the uh, minister uh, Latif, Latif Ahmad. And uh, no, so he made a lot of allegations against them. So how did you establish or how did you find more information about um, this woman Zainab and uh, Minister Latif, right? Latif has denied that that woman, that woman is his second wife, okay? So one way of doing that, right, um, if I were, uh, one, way, one way of um, Rafizi did that is, Rafizi showed that um, Zainab actually congrats Latif when he was sworn in as minister, which means these two person are uh, know each other. You, of course, you can't prove that they are. He, she is the second wife yet, uh, but uh, you can prove that they know each other, right? Or, or they there is certain um, friend relationship between them, right? So let's say. Uh, so how do you do that, right? Let's say I'm going to go to um, Atif Ahmad. Um, his profile, right? His uh, Facebook official. Then you do a, you can do a search uh, within Facebook. So you do a search, and here I can do sign up. Okay. And then you will see that you know there are many posts. Um, most of them are from Chegubat. 
uh, this is another guy from Versatu. Uh, he is trying to defend um, Latif okay, and attack uh, Rafizi. All right. So he mentioned a lot about Zainab and all these posts appears, you know, someone shared it in um, Abdul Latif uh, Facebook as well, right? All, all of them uh, uh, mentioned Zainab. So I don't want to look at this because these are like what? This is all the posts after Rafizi exposed the case, right? So I'm going to look at old posts. For example, I can then do a filter here to date posted in 2021. Okay, so I want to look at last year. And here, this post when he was sworn in as minister, okay, uh, this account by the name of Zainab Muhammad Saleh um, actually congratulated him in one of the comments here. Okay. However, guys, <laughs> you don't, you won't be able to see it now because it has been removed. Okay, uh, after what uh, Rafizi exposed it, it has been removed. But if you go to um, Rafizi website, um, he had a screenshot of that comment. Let me show you. Um, this is the, the the alleged woman. I think she also removed her Facebook account. You won't be able to see her anymore. Um, scroll down here. There is a sorry here, 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 here. Yep, here. Yeah, Zaina Muhammad Sali, steady dato, blah blah blah. Okay, here. Um, this command supposed to appear here. Okay, but it has removed after um, Rafizi exposed it. Uh, of course, right? You remove it if you are. Um, if you have something to hide, then probably you know you would you would do the same thing. All right, but just to show you, this is how you can search in Facebook, right? Using if you go to any um, profile using the search button, you are able to search um, for it, and you are able to filter by years. However, you can't filter by month or day, and uh, that is the flaw in the search engine of Facebook. Okay. So even if you go to any private um, Facebook page, let's say um, private Facebook page, this is another sign up, not that one. Okay, right? Let's say this is a private page, and um, because I'm not friend with this sign up, so how how come I have all this sign up, Mama Sally, with me? Because I've been doing a lot of searches about Disney. Okay, um, you click on this three buttons here um oh no this one you can't even search it yeah sometimes you can search it by clicking here you can find a search button but some profiles don't allow you to search it okay so just try this if it's a public figure then you should be able to search it you know, like what i search okay um you can choose years but if you just want to search for a certain keywords during a specific period, let's say I want to search for the last three months, okay, just the three months, you can do that using an external tool, a third party tool. And that tool is called Who Posted What? Okay, Who Posted What? Okay, and this Who Posted What? allows you to search specific day, specific month, specific year, okay? So I can, let's say, you can also search from specific um, account, okay? So for each account on Facebook, there is a UID, which means unique ID. So if you want to search within a specific um, account, then you need to find out the UID first. So how do you find a UID? You go to the account homepage, the profile page, copy the URL, put under get ID, okay? Then click find. Sorry guys, I have, sometimes I go fa a little bit faster. If you can't follow it, if you want to follow it, you might want to rewatch the recording later, okay? So now we have this ID. This is the ID of that account, okay? And now I can search the account by putting in the ID here, okay? and I can put a keyword, right? But this is um, very similar to the search function here, okay? I search a keyword 
um, within that account, right? But if I want to search a keyword in a specific time range, I can do that by coding here. So let's say I'm going to do scorpion, scorpion, okay? And then I can put the date. For example, um, I want to search the month of July. Okay, and then I can click search. Then I'll, I'll, you can see that I'm searching Scorpion. It, it brings me back to the um, Facebook, but it, bring, it, it put in the search uh, term here, Scorpion, and um, the posts are the posts only from 1st of July to 31st of July. All right. And all these posts um, have the keyword Scorpion. You can see all the submarines. Okay, so this allows you to search within a specific time range. Um, this one doesn't. Okay, this um, general page, this internal search engine by Google, uh, sorry, by Facebook, doesn't allow you to do that. That's why we use who posted what. Okay, so far so good, right? So who posted what? We have covered that. There's another tool called Intelligent X. Um, you can play with it if you want. I'm not going to um, demo it, but it works similar to um, who posted what. Okay. So usually I do. I use who posted what. Um, if I still cannot find any results, I might try um, Intelligent X. Our some of them we use intelligence x before we think that the results is not that uh, reliable because it tend to miss um some posts or it tend to give you uh wrong posts wrong results right but it's a it's another alternative right and all these tools uh will not work forever if facebook changed their, the way they allow other people to search facebook or they change their algorithm that it will it might um, affect these tools as well because you can see that this tool if you put in the search term it actually go back to uh, the facebook internal search to show you the results so if facebook decide to ban or to change the way they search it then it will affect those third-party tools these tools are not owned by facebook okay these are developed by people outside of facebook and another thing to show you is that um, if you do the search, um, you won't be able to search um, posts by private accounts uh, or private groups or secret groups. Those are all out of reach. Okay, Facebook will only show you results from verified accounts, those with a blue tick, and also public uh, pages, public groups. Okay. So this is a public group. You can see that this is a public group. This is another public group. This is another public group. No, sorry. I think this is a public page. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Facebook doesn't allow you to search private um, posts. Okay. It is part of their protection for their users' privacy. All right. So that is uh, for Facebook. For Twitter. Um, Twitter, that's a Twitter internal search here. You all know that, right? Let's uh, search for sign up. And I can go to advanced search. And this allows me to search for words and also put in um, filter. For example, you want to search from specific account, you can put in. Uh, if you just want to search for tweets that mention certain accounts, you can also do that as a filter. Right, so it's quite um, in the sense. If you compare it to Facebook, it is more um, specific, and you can search for more. You can even put in a range of date, time range. If um, you if you find that the internal search uh, doesn't allow you to uh, find your results, or you're expecting more than that, then you can try the 
Twitter Advanced Search under Invit. Invit is the extension that I asked you to install at the um, beginning of the workshop, okay? Now I'm going to launch my Invit um, so you can have a look. Invit, open toolbox, and there is, um, There's a Twitter search here. Twitter search. So you can use that to search Twitter. And we are going to use it to search for, uh, to do reverse image search, right? But just to show you that it also has other um, tools that you can use. This one is to search for um, Twitter. Okay. Um, they are all quite straightforward. So I'm don't, I don't think I need to pay more for them. Okay, monitoring Facebook, of course, um, for most of the newsrooms here, if you work with the newsrooms, you have a tool called Crowd Tangle. Um, it is the, so far the best tool to monitor um, Facebook. Okay, you need to have an account from Facebook. It is owned by Facebook. It is a Facebook tool. Um, so if you are not sure how to use this, check with your social media editor. Okay, um, most newsrooms in Malaysia already have an account of um, CrowdAngle. CrowdAngle gives you a lot of information about a page. For example, um, what is the most popular post by a page? What um, You can even look at like historical data of the page, fans, number of fans and followers and likes. A lot of analytics that you can get from CrowdAngle. So it is helpful to, to, to use CrowdAngle to understand more about a specific Facebook page. Um, Twitter, um, I we like to use uh, TweetDeck right to do monitoring. All right, um, another thing that I want to show you is that we talk about uh, about you know the circumstances of a post or a information. If you are able to find that information on a social media platform, then of course you want to dig deeper. One key thing that you want to know is when the post or when the tweet was uploaded. Okay. Um, when did when was it uploaded? Right, great. Okay. So that will give you um, whether it has been uploaded before and after an event, uh, what time it was um, uploaded, right? Those matters, right? Those will help you to um, understand the circumstances of the post. Um, I know that most of you are most for most uh, social media, you are able to just check the time posted on that platform but the problem is usually you know what the what time zone is that time showing okay so different platforms they actually showing different time zone twitter and facebook it is determined by the time zone that your computer or your device is set to right so if you're if you are in malaysia your computer is set to kuala lumpur time then the time that you see on Twitter post uh, on tweet or Facebook post is the time is the local time is the KL time right but if you check YouTube okay um, YouTube is not straightforward you have to check it using invit okay the tool that I show you just now and invit will show the uh, when the YouTube video was uploaded uh, in UTC time so you need to convert UTC to a local time Instagram is in UTC. Uh, TikTok is in Unix time code. So let's go through them one by one. For Twitter, right, the timestamp is easy. You can mouse over. It will show you the time. Okay. Or you sometimes it appears bottom here. All right. So this is showing the time of your of the time zone that your computer or your device is set to. And then we have um, Facebook. If you mouse over um, the small time stamps here, that, that it says that two hours or two days or one month, right? You will also see the time and date, which is also uh, in the time zone of your device. Okay, YouTube. YouTube is not that easy. So you can see that this is the eclipse, right? That was, it says that the solar eclipse happened on January 9th. 
But if you look at the publish date, it said January 8. So how can you publish something about January 9 on January 8? That makes sense, right? So what we can do is that you use um, invite um, video, the video uh, tool on for YouTube, and you're able to see the time. This is UTC time. So if you convert to local time, um, you will see that it actually makes sense. It was posted on January 9. Just that when it appears here, it was in a different time zone. Okay. So um, do you need me to um, demo for you? So let's say I go to um, any video. Okay, this is a video posted nine years ago. I just use it as an example. I can go to the video analysis, put in a link, submit. And it should give me the upload time and date here. This one, but it's in UTC. Okay, you need to convert to local time, and you can choose, you know, what city, uh, Kuala Lumpur, and it will tell you that this is posted on this hour, um, on this day. Okay, so this is using Invite to check when the video was posted. That's YouTube. Okay, Instagram. Instagram show you the date. It doesn't show you the time. So if you want to know the time, you need to right click. You have to be on Chrome first. You right click on the date um, tab here and you select inspect. Then you will see uh, it opens up the window, shows you some you know um, web web development code and programming code. And here you will see date time. This is the date followed by the time. Okay, so this is for um, Instagram. Uh, maybe let me chat Instagram. And remember that it is in um, um, UTC. Okay, so you need to convert it to local time zone. And then for TikTok, uh, TikTok is even more complicated. Uh, this is the TikTok video. First, you need to click into the video and then right click on the video and click view page source. And then you search, you, when you click new page source, you will see you know, um, some programming codes. Okay? You have to search, use control F to search for the word create time. Okay? They usually have two create times inside, use the first one, not the second one. Okay? The first one, after the word create time, there is some numbers, okay? Copy the numbers, and this is the time zone. This, so this is the time um, in, sorry, in Unix time code, okay? This I call Unix time code. And you need to convert it to a local time, right? How do you convert it? Just Google Unix time zone converter and pick your own local time zone. It should be able to convert it. Okay. So again, TikTok. First, when you see it, um, the post, click into the post, the web page, click it so that it become one page, right? And right click on the video and click view page source. After you're in review page source, search for the word create time. They should be two create times. Look at the first one, not the second one. The first one, there is a series of numbers after the first create time. That is the Unix time code. You can then convert it to a local time zone uh, by using any online Unix time code um, converter. Right, so why do we care so much about social media? It's because social media can give us a lot of information about the person who's spreading the misinformation or probably the person who started it, okay? Uh, one way to do, um, to verify whether this is a real person is to do a social audit. If it is a real person, 
sometimes uh, if this is like a person who is more savvy in using internet sometimes he or she would have you know the same account on different platforms okay so this is just one example ibit liu the preacher you can see that he has you know uh, accounts on all the major social media platforms all right if you suspect that you know the account on twitter is a troll or cyber trooper or it is then it is operated by a robot okay it's not a real human uh, this is a very typical way of operating you know um, online information campaign right you set up a bot that keep um, pushing out misinformation and there is a tool called botometer botometer will decide you know, will help you to determine how likely an account is a bot or not so you can actually i can i can put i can search my own uh, account okay it is searching my account says to, to to see um whether i'm a bot or not and you can see that um okay um i scored 0 0.8 out of 5 because i am a real person i'm not a bot okay and yeah so this is how you can um, do you can also check my followers you can also check friends and a lot more in um, um, activities that you can know from photometer okay of course it um it um determine how likely this account is a robot account right uh, operated by a robot by looking at for example echo chambers fake followers and things like that okay oh let me go back it keeps going oops okay so that is botometer um, there's another one called truth nest that i'm going to do very quickly truth nest there's one twitter account that i can i think is it's a it's a troll it's called um box school team this one okay it has been very very active in the past two three months during the um trial of uh, najib so let's do let's try and you know check this account so if i check using bottle meter and also truth nest okay it's still opening so you can see it's 2.2 it's much higher than my score right okay and there's another tool called um account analysis so i'm going to open up all those tools and uh, another one is called spoon bill i'm going to open up um, all those you can also do the same thing like the try to check boss school there's elias boss school underscore team i can put that in the chat box so you can play with it this is bottle meter okay truth nest takes some time to load uh, let me go to another one spoon bill and another one is account analysis account analysis these are the several these are the three tools I'm going to share with you in the chat box so you can try them. Truth Nest, Spoon Bill. Let's start with uh, account analysis. I can just put in, sorry, put in the, I have to put in the username of boss school team here. Okay, analyze. And it tells you um, which day uh, the account is tweeting a lot, okay? 
volume by date, okay, day of week, language mostly in in, um, in um, I think it's in Malay, so that's why uh, it is not recognized. Then you can also see hashtags, hashtags, and everything. Reply user, right? So you can see which accounts are try are, are are amplifying the message you know by uh boss school is actually the media express okay the media express i'm not sure what account is this and also i and md retweeted users okay let's look at spoonbill Spoonbill, uh, what happens to Spoonbill is that Spoonbill track um, whether an account has changed their bio. Okay, so you want to know because some accounts, you know, probably they started as a K pop account, then it accumulated a lot of fans, right? But when during the election, it suddenly turned into a propaganda machine. So you want to know when they change their uh, bio. Okay. And spoon bill will track that for you so i can use and you don't have to sign into spoon bill that's a way to do spoon bill by putting spoonbill.io slash twitter slash data slash username so i'm going to put this um i'm going to put this inside um spoon bill slash twitter slash data slash I'm, I'm going to put my own username right slash Guang king my own account and you will see that i changed my bio 2021 december 1st i 2020, 2020 august 15 i changed another bio yeah and i'm not verified change up my change my website yeah so it basically traces back the history of an account, right? So it helps you to understand more about this account. Probably it started in a Chinese language, later changed to an English language. And you know, uh, that's a red flag, right? Yeah, that's a problem, right? Um, because there is this business of selling social media accounts. When you build up an account, you accumulated you know, millions of followers. Um, you can actually sell it at a very high price. And these information operators will buy it from you uh, because they want to spread misinformation. For example, okay, it could also be for marketing purpose, okay, like for uh, non, uh, for for like good intention, okay, um, totally legitimate operation, okay. So, but this um, tools will help you to understand the history. Account analysis. Um, what else? I did not show you the truthness. Yes. Oh, it is very slow. It is not opening it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Here now it is. It is this. I'm gonna put boss school team. School team. Ah. So now it is analyzing the account. It will give you. Um, so far, truthness is the one that gives a lot of information. So it has the tag of troll, spam, suspicious followers, mentioned many times from the same user, mentioning the same user in over 20% of the tweets, spam. Almost all tweets contain mentions. Several tweets include multiple mentions each. Okay. Bot indicator 60%. Um, too many tweets per day, right? This is one of the red flag. You know, they when they found it, they would increase the bot bot indicator um, score okay so you can see the weekly activity peak hours you can see that you know they are tweeting uh, this account is tweeting even when people are sleeping post frequency sometimes it can go up to 70 times 79 tweets per day Okay, you can even see like what kind of hashtag that you know um, it is using. Mention users um, hashtag, and he likes to mention one in. Mention users, so these are probably the users in the same network. Okay, so if uh, you want to discover like um, who, 
which accounts are amplifying the same message, you might want to analyze them as well, check um, these accounts and see who are they. All right, so um, TruthNest um, actually gives you a lot of information about uh, any Twitter account. But of course, it has to be public, right? If you make it private, then uh, you won't be able to track it. Okay, I'm aware of the time, so we need to shift gears and go into um, reverse image search. Okay. So just now, the whole part was about searching social media um, to find out the circumstances, the provenance, the, the origin, right? And who spread it, okay, of the misinformation. So now we are going to look at if the message contained video or image, how can you verify the image? One way of doing that is to check whether that image has been published before or not, and who published it, where it was published, okay? For example, if this, so this story by old media, right? Mangsa Banjo di Kelantan Meningkat. It was published in 2019. And with this image of, you know, Banjil. And you look at this image, you might think that, oh, this is the Banjil in Kelantan mentioned in this story in 2019. Um, but if you do a reverse image search, which, me, which means you want to search the image to see whether the same image has been published by others before, you will find that it was published even before 2019. So this is the news. Um, this is the news where the image was first used in 2014. Okay. Um, if you do a reverse image search, the results will show you what are the websites that have published the exact same image before. And this will let you know that, oh, this is actually an old image. This is not the image of the 2019 Banjil in Kelantan. So this website is using an old image without telling the readers. And the readers might thought that, oh, wow, this is really bad. You know, this, if this, this is the current Banjil, this is really bad. Okay, so how do you do that? You do, how do you do the reverse image search? Um, I ask you to install the Chrome extension of um, Verify because that will help you to do Google, to do reverse image search on different platforms. So reverse image search is like a text search, right? Just that you're not using text to search something. You're using an image to search the internet. You are looking for similar image or you're looking for exact image, okay, to see whether it appears in other pages, okay. You can use Google to do that. If you right-click, you can click search Google for image, okay. Let me show you. O Media, Mangsa Banjo di Kelantan. Mangsa Banjo di Kelantan. Oops, no, not, not Facebook, sorry. I want to look at the website, okay? If you have any questions, um, you can put into the chat box. Okay, there's questions about the recordings. Mm, anything else? So far, so good. All right, so this is the image. If you want to do a reverse image, you can right-click. And if you have a you know a, a, a latest version of Chrome, you will see that there's a search image with with Google Lens. So it's different from search Google for image because this is a updated um, function. But it is the same. It is the same. Google Lens and Google Image. Click on it. You will see it opens up a site bar here, right? Google Lens find image source. Okay, you can see that you know these are visual matches. So the same image has also appeared in the different websites here. If you want a more detailed um, search result, you can open it into a new tab by clicking the button here. All right, now you'll see that this is the image that you are searching and Google shows you. Google will tell you that this is floods in Malaysia. You know, it has a 
I don't know, algorithm or AI to identify that. And there are visual matches. These are all the websites that use this image. OK? If I click search, then you are searching flood simulator. OK? If you click find image source, it will bring you to a different results page and shows you the link and the title right of the pages that have the matching images means they're exactly the same images as some of those um you will be able to see the date 2015 2014. so let's say this is 2014 you click on it and you will see that it was published in 2014 by a blogger okay um, this guy is actually a journalist, okay? And it was published in Malay Mail 2014. So you know that this picture is not the picture for 2019 because it has been published you know, five years ago, all right? And this is how you can do that. You can also click here. But this one, the problem is that it doesn't show you a lot of information about these pages, right? So you have to check them one by one. But if you click on Find Image Source, and you go to this page, right? It will tell you more information about the different websites that have the same image. It gives sometimes it gives you the date, right? You can of course you need to click inside and verify that. Okay, uh, it also shows you visually similar images. Uh, I don't find it very useful for verification because these are all different flooding messages. Uh, sorry, images, right? But we want to find matching images here. Okay. Got it? This is how you can do it on Google. So if Google doesn't give you good results or there's no results, right, then you can try other platforms. For example, you can try Bing, Microsoft Bing. Um, Microsoft Bing also has, you can just Google Bing reverse image search, okay? And you will see find similar images here. You can take a photo. You can also um, paste an online photo. If the, on the photo is online, you can paste the URL, right? Or you can take a photo, or you can um, browse from your own computer, OK? Google image reverse search also allow you to do that. So if you use Google image search, you will see Google images. This, and you have to click on this search by image, OK? And this allows you to upload a picture. If the picture is not online, you receive it on your WhatsApp, then you can save it into a computer and upload it. Okay. If your picture is online, for example, this one, right, you want to find the URL of the picture. How do you find it? You right click, open image in new tab here. This is the URL. Copy it, put inside here. So paste image or URL, just put a URL. And you'll find the results here from this is from Bing. Okay. You can even crop the image. Okay. This is available um, in both Bing and Google. And for Google, you just put the image link here and click search. And it will give you the results, the one that I show you. You click here, it brings you to the detailed results. OK, so for Bing, uh, it's the same thing. You put in the URL, you will see the results here. All right. Um, another other tools for doing the same image search is Yandex. Yandex is very strong in searching for buildings, um, landmarks, things like that. Currently, um, stronger than Google on logos and abstract graphics. For example, you want to know a logo, whether it is belong to the police department of Malaysia, a police department of Indonesia, right? You can search that. Uh, architecture as well. Um, faces sometimes. Another engine um, is called Teen Eye. Teen Eye usually gives you the, the, the least results, right? Uh, but sometimes um, it gives you it could surprise you. So if you try Google, Bing, Yandex, then also try Teen Eye. Okay. So Teen Eye, let me just show you. Teen Eye. OK. 
Okay. The good thing about Keen Eye is that it has the function to sort the image according to publication date. Here, you can sort by oldest, which means um, so you can see that you say that this is the oldest article that has the matching image, and it was published in 2015. But we know that you know Google tells us it was actually published in 2014, even earlier. And this 2014 result does the, does not show here. Okay, so you know there are pro and cons. So my advice is that you know try all of them before you verify anything. Okay, and how you can do that is if you install the extension by Invit. Right, I show you this extension. If you install it, then there is a quick way of doing um, the search. Let me just close all this tab. Okay, you right click on it and you can then do fake news debunker by Invit We Verify. Here, you can choose image reverse search all, right? Which means you search for Google, Bing, Yandex, TinEye, Baidu the Chinese um, search engine, all the different search engine, okay? If I click all, what have happened is that it is going to open up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven new tabs, each tab showing me um, the result from a different platform. This is from Google, this is from Baidu, this is from Bing, TinEye, Yandex, and another one, okay? so. This is the easiest way to search on all platforms. So you don't have to do it four or five times. Right click, go to fake news debunker by Invit, click reverse image search all. But before that, you need to install the extension. Remember here, okay? I already put that link. I put that again in the chat box for those who join us late. All right. Okay, practice, everyone. Go to this tweet for those who follow the LCS, the LCS um, scandal. So what happened is that former defense minister, um, Hishamuddin, he posted the picture of the alleged LCS one Maharaja Lela on 2017, okay, on the 24th of August 2017. And we know that the time when he posted this, right, this ship was not completed yet. In fact, it is not even completed now, right? But he posted it and it gives the impression that the ship, and it says it's Slamat Datang, right? <laughs> Which means it has been completed, we have received it. And the picture show that it is sailing, right? It is sailing um, in the sea, right? So it gives you, and it has even like a flag that looks like a Malaysian flag, okay? How come the ship can sail if it is not completed yet, right? So if in 2017, someone, probably one of us here, did a fact check on this image, probably, Probably would we would have good questions for Hisham and ask him that hey, this is not a real picture. Okay, so my question is that where did this picture coming from? Where was it first published? Who is the likely owner of this image? Is it from our um, navy or is it from somewhere else? Where did he find a picture, make this graphic, and tweet it to give the impression that you know? The ship has been done, we have received it, and now, you know, then it was sailing, okay? So use Google, sorry, not Google, use reverse image search to try to find who first published this picture and who is the likely owner of this image, okay? We don't have much time, guys, so I'll give you about five minutes. Um, if you have, oh, wow, this is, this, this is quick, okay. Someone already, Put a link in the chat box. Um, Lauren, don't just guess Egyptian army. Just no. Tell me where did you get this image? Give me the link, like Jiang Jie Yong, right? Give me the link and try to make a reasonable guess who is the likely owner of this image. 
by looking at those art articles that posted these images. Okay, let's see the first answer. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to use this time to close all my other tabs. Okay. Okay, this is the first link, then there's a second link about Egypt. Um, this one, is that the same one posted by Hisham? I don't think so, right? Because I don't see... No, it's different. Right, you can see that it's different. So this is not the exact picture. I mean, part of it is this. Is this this part is the same? But if you look at the front here, it is not the same. Right, there are windows here. There is different window, uh, different kind of windows. Okay, so this is definitely not the same picture. Hisham did not get a picture from the Egyptians um, from this Daily News Egypt website. Okay. So, yeah, you need to look at it carefully. Okay, yeah, I think most of you would um, found would uh, would find these two websites. One is from Rentaka, okay, and you will see the picture here. This is the exact same picture. It was published twenty fourteen. Okay, and another one is the French website. Okay, and it was also published twenty fourteen. Okay, so which show us that Hisham, he actually used an old photo before 2014. And this one is from DCNS. So both websites quote or cite DCNS as the source of the image. If you go to DCNS, you will find that um, it has been renamed to Naval Group, which is the group that is um, that you know we engage our government engaged to build the LCS for us. So what I did was I then search um, the neighbor group for the image, right? I can do search like this, but I couldn't find any image of that, right? I, I couldn't find any um, image of this ship on um, neighbor group. So I can't establish whether it is really coming from DCNS. But my assumption is that probably it was published by the neighbor group before they rename it, before they were rebranded. Re re um, but after they rebrand, they restructure their website, um, the image was gone. Or probably it's an old image, they already removed it. But if you go to their product page, um, sorry. Innovation, I think it's innovation. No, that's a product page where you are able to see a lot more images like that. Um, yeah, here, something like this. Okay, and then you real, you real, you will realize that you know they have a lot of. The graphics like this and these are all illustrations these are not real ships right so my guess again i can't establish it because i don't have very strong proof the likely owner of the image you know it is coming from dcns before it was renamed to um the naval group and it is one of those illustrations um, for their products okay but i don't have proof for that the only thing i can confirm is that hisham is tweeting an old photo this is not the 2017 photo. The same photo has been there even before, right? Um, we signed the agreement. I, no, 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 sorry. I think we signed an agreement much earlier than that. But definitely, you know, this is not the real ship, okay? Because the ship has not been built yet, okay? So this is how you can do a reverse image search to do fact checking. So the lesson learned here is that 
probably next time any politician pay, pull, post something like that, we should all fact check it, right? Because this this happened like 2017, you know, and then now it's 2022, right? Uh, and this became this blow out as a as a as a scandal. All right. So this is one example. I know that we are um, just a few minutes to 10:30, so I'm going to try to wrap it this up. There's another practice. Uh, I'm not going to go through this with you, but um, you can do that after the after the sessions. Okay, Maha there, cry. This is a Facebook post. Um, my question is that you look at a Facebook post. It was, I think it was tweet. It, it went very viral um, in 2018. It was shared 67,000 times. Okay, it went viral, um, but it was later found to be untrue. The whole thing here is untrue, including and this miss this image was actually taken from other from another website and this it was published way before 2018 okay so the questions here is that when did this image first appeared who first published it what was the context why was he crying okay why was he crying and this inspiracy kumal mahade this facebook page used this and create Fabricate, I would say, fabricated a story about why Mahate is crying. You know, totally false. Okay, um, so you can do the this as a practice by you know um, doing a reverse image search on this um, image. All right, I'm going to rush through the rest of um, my presentation. Just one more thing to cover is reverse video search. So if you have a video. Um, how do you search the video? There's no reverse e video search um, tools per se. So what we do is that we can capture a keyframe of the video and we do a reverse image search, okay? How do we capture it? Of course, we can do the manual way. We play the video on our screen, we do the capture, and then we use reverse image search, okay? But because videos have different frames, right? Different keyframes. So we might need to capture different keyframes and do all the reverse image search. Or another more convenient way is to use Invit. Invit um, can help us to automate the process. If you upload a video to Invit, it is able to capture different keyframes. After that, do reverse image search for you. So I'm going to use this to demo to you, um, to this um, video, right? It is, I don't know whether you remember this, this is Spanish Fly Korea, okay. Um, let me copy this and play this video for you. It's a very short video. I know we are at 10.30, give me another two minutes. 네, 이처럼 보기 좋은 도라지를 재료로 간편하게 마실 수 있는 차 음료가 출시돼 시민들에게 큰 도움을 줄 것으로 봅니다. 다음 뉴스를 okay so basically it, it it claims that you know um when our minister our health minister you know um um say spanish flu as spanish fly you know he made a mistake it appeared in a news um in korea okay and the newscaster you know laugh at him um, during the broadcast. So is that true? Okay, so is that true? Um, we can do a reverse video search by capturing the different keyframe to verify it. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how you can use that using the Invit tool. So you go to Invit, again, open the toolbox. You go to keyframes, and the video there's a keyframes. Put in the URL, submit. It will then process the videos and show you different keyframes and allow you to do a reverse image, image search of the keyframes. Okay. At the same time, I'm going to put that link in the chat box so that you can do that yourself as well. Okay. 
And now I have the keyframe here, right? So I can do a reverse image search, for example. I can pick on this one. Sorry, I just click on it. It will do, I just click on it, it will do a reverse image search on Google. All right. And you will see that they are matching images in other YouTube channels. Okay. So I'm going to put, I'm going to open up one of them. Um, not this one. Um, this one. These are like multiple um, videos. Of course, you can scroll down to search, but I want a quicker way of doing that. Not this one, not good. This one. This is a channel, I think. Yeah. Okay. Here. 네, 최근에는 uh -huh. 미처럼 주민들에게 큰 도움을 줄 것으로 봅니다. 다음 뉴스를 찾으시죠. Okay. So, if you search through all the results, right? You will soon realize that this is actually a newscast footage that people has been used to make meme, okay? Which means they actually change the little frame here to put in whatever they want, and they change the subtitle like this, okay? They use the same um, broadcast footage. They just change this small frame here, the small picture here, into whatever they want, and then they manipulate the subtitle. Okay, so this is a fabricated or manipulated video. This is not true. Um, it was not published. It was not broadcasted by you know Korean TV. No. Okay, so this is how you can do reverse video search. So if your video is not on YouTube, you can also upload the whole video. I'm um, here by clicking this upload the whole video from your computer. All right. So I think that's all uh, for today, right? Um, and we are not going to cover geolocation. We don't have, we don't have time for that. Um, but I prefer to you know to go slow so that you all. It's not actually very slow, right? Huh? I, I was still pretty fast. But of course, one and a half hour. Usually, we did um, this training for three hours. Sometimes it can go up to four hours with a break. But for one and a half hours, I think we have covered uh, quite a lot of tools and techniques. And these are all the very important ones. Okay. So I guess I will just stop here and I'll pass this back to uh, Dr. Sabre.